the discovery of a third exoplanet orbiting Proxima Centauri, the star closest to our solar system, reveals that our nearest stellar neighbor seems to be full of exciting new worlds. Exoplanets are worlds that circle other stars, and astronomers have found evidence of two such worlds orbiting our nearest stellar neighbor, which is only 4.2 light years away. On February 10, 2022, they discovered the third planet in the neighborhood. The Proxima neighborhood is starting to seem a little on the crowded side. The Very Large Telescope VLT, of the European Southern Observatory was used by the research team to find the third exoplanet, which they named Proxima Centauri d. This comes in the wake of the recent discoveries of two more exoplanets, Proxima b and Proxima c, which took place in 2016 and 2020, respectively. One of the most fascinating pieces of information is that Proxima Centauri d only has a quarter of the mass of Earth and is one of the smallest and lightest exoplanets found so far. Proxima Centauri is just one of the stars in the Alpha Centauri system, the nearest star system to our own that has been discovered so far. Proxima Centauri d, or simply Proxima d, is approximately 4 kilometers away from this red dwarf star, less than a tenth of Mercury's distance from our Sun. Because of that, it only takes 5 days for Proxima d to orbit its star. Just imagine how fast that is! Due to the distance, it orbits close to the star's habitable zone, which is the area surrounding the star where it is neither too hot nor too cold for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface, a possible sign of life. In addition, Proxima d is considered to be a rocky planet that resembles our own in many ways. Yet, whether or not Proxima d possesses an atmosphere is still a mystery to us. If there is no atmosphere, its estimated constant temperature remains around 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. Now, let's have a look at the very first exoplanet ever found in the Alpha Centauri system, which was Proxima b. It was discovered that the planet has an orbital period of 11.2 days and a minimum mass that is at least 30% higher than that of the Earth. If it were orbiting our Sun, this world would be a scorching zone. But since Proxima Centauri is only a red dwarf star, the planet Proxima b is located smack dab in the middle of the habitable zone. If this is the case, liquid water and perhaps life could exist there. Proxima b's Earth-like mass also suggests that it could be a rocky terrestrial planet like our own. But since Proxima b revolves around a star that is far smaller and less massive than the Sun, the researchers believe that it is tidally locked and rotating synchronously with its host star. This would mean that one side of the planet is constantly facing the star, while the other side always faces away from it, creating a light side and a dark side. Another mystery is Proxima b's atmosphere. The planet's orbit around its star, which takes only 11 Earth days to complete, is extremely close. This is why scientists think it's likely that Proxima Centauri's radiation has contaminated Proxima b's atmosphere, making it hard for the alien planet's surface to retain liquid water. But let's assume that this exoplanet has an atmosphere. Is it possible to live on a planet the size of Earth that orbits within the habitable zone of its star? We don't know for sure yet, but for scientists, it remains an attractive prospect for future exploration because of these features. Super Earth, or a mini Neptune planet, that's their nickname for the other exoplanet that is approximately seven times as big as Earth, Proxima Centauri c. It completes one revolution around its star every 5.2 years, yet because of the dimness of its host star and the length of its orbital cycle, the temperature is too low, which makes it highly unlikely that Proxima Centauri c is capable of supporting life. It's more likely that the planet Proxima Centauri b, which is only somewhat larger than Earth and orbits within the star's habitable zone, may support life as we know it. How much longer would it take us to reach that destination if it turned out that these exoplanets did really harbor life? If we were to compare this speed to that of the Voyager 1 probe, which is currently on an interstellar mission and is moving away from the Sun at a rate of 17.3 kilometers per second, it would take more than 73,000 years to arrive to Alpha Centauri. Even if we were able to travel at the speed of light, which is theoretically impossible according to the theory of special relativity, it would still take 4.22 years to get there. To put it another way, with the existing technology that we have right now, no, humanity cannot yet travel to Alpha Centauri. What is it exactly that makes Alpha Centauri stand out from other systems, aside from it being the closest known star system to our own? What do we already know about it? And what gives us reason to believe that extraterrestrial life or habitable worlds might be lurking in that part of the universe? One is that its binary star system doubles the chances of finding a habitable planet like ours. It is composed of three stars, 
a binary pair known as Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, as well as a small red dwarf known as Alpha Centauri C, or Proxima Centauri. It is believed that Alpha Centauri C is gravitationally bound to the other two stars, but it is also possible that it is just passing through as a transient. Second is that they both have masses and luminosities that are very comparable to our own Sun. The simplest explanation is the final one. By cosmic standards, Alpha Centauri is literally across the street. However, aside from these exoplanets found in Alpha Centauri, have any more exoplanets been discovered? Absolutely! The Milky Way contains the vast majority of the exoplanets that have been identified thus far. Thanks to NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, we know that the galaxy has more planets than stars. Thousands of exoplanets have been discovered using a variety of methods since the 1990s, when the first ones were discovered. The elements of these exoplanets are similar to those found on our own solar system, but their proportions may change. Iron or carbon may be the dominant element on some planets, whilst water or ice may be the dominant element on others. Observers have discovered worlds engulfed in hot lava, planets with atmospheres as dense as styrofoam, and planets with dense cores that are still in orbit around their sun. Even though 51 Pegasi b wasn't the first exoplanet discovered, it was the first to be found around a star that was similar to our Sun. Jupiter's half-sized cousin, 51 Peg, circles its star so tightly that it takes just four days to complete a full year. That's what keeps 51 Peg sweltering to the point of being uninhabitable. Exoplanets can be spotted via the wobble approach, or radial velocity. Using a telescope, we can track the gravitational jiggles a planet causes its star to produce dragging it first one way and then the other. A significant number of exoplanets have been discovered using this technique, which has yielded dozens, then hundreds. Shadow hunting has overtaken it though since 2009. Waiting for a planet to throw a shadow as it crosses or transits the face of its star is referred to as the transit method. We are talking about an exceedingly slight dimming of light, often less than 1%. It then sparked a wave of transit discoveries and became the primary method of determining the location of exoplanets. Many Earth-sized rocky planets have been identified, and in the quest to find life on other planets, one intriguing finding has been made. A system consisting of seven rocky worlds, all of which have the potential for water to exist on their surfaces. Earth-sized planets in the habitable zone have never been detected in such numbers before. The system is the TRAPPIST-1s, the most extensively researched system in the universe as of today. It was discovered in February 2018 that some of the seven planets might hold more water than the seas of Earth, either as water vapor in the atmosphere for the planets nearest to their star, or as liquid water or ice on the planets further away. Their composition differs from Earth's, according to a study conducted in the year 2021. If that's the case, it might suggest that they all have roughly the same proportion of the components that make up most rocky planets. That ratio, however, must be significantly different from Earth's. In comparison to the density of our own planet, the TRAPPIST-1 planets are around 8% less dense. But so far, other exoplanets that have been discovered revolve around red dwarf stars, which are scaled down and cooler analogs of our own Sun. Perhaps the most peculiar planets are those that we observe in other solar systems but do not have on our own. It would appear that super-Earths, or planets with a diameter that is up to 1.8 times that of Earth, are very prevalent throughout the cosmos. Are they enlarged, stony worlds comparable to gigantic Earths, or are they more gaseous like Neptune? We put this one in the category of mystery. Another category frequently referred to as many Neptunes are most likely just what they sound like gaseous worlds that are far smaller than our very own Neptune. The question is, why don't we have one? And why are there so many of them scattered around the cosmos? As of this time, scientists are still looking for answers. But would it be possible for James Webb to obtain data from these exoplanets? The James Webb Space Telescope got a reading of the spectra of the gas giant exoplanet WASP-96b as it began scientific operations in July of 2022. Even if the spectrum revealed the existence of water and clouds, it is highly unlikely that life could exist on a planet as massive and hot as WASP-96b, unless you enjoy sunbathing at approximately 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. However, these first findings suggest that James Webb will be able to recognize extremely faint chemical fingerprints in the light emanating from exoplanets. Webb will soon begin pointing its mirrors in the direction of TRAPPIST-1e, a planet with the potential to support life and roughly the same size as Earth that is only 39 light-years away from our home. Another question is, 
How will we find life on these planets? Exoplanetary light, broken into a rainbow spectrum that can be read like a barcode, will be the ticket. This technique, known as transit spectroscopy, would provide a menu of atmospheric gases and compounds, including those associated with life. Webb is able to search for biosignatures by observing planets as they transit in front of the stars that are their hosts and recording the starlight that is refracted by the atmosphere of the planet. But because finding life was not Webb's primary mission, the telescope can only investigate a small fraction of the possibly habitable worlds that are located in its immediate vicinity. Only the carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor levels in the atmosphere may be detected by this instrument. There are specific combinations of these gases that may indicate life, but Webb does not have the ability to detect unbonded oxygen. We now know that exoplanets are numerous in our galaxy, thanks to the discovery of at least three planets around the nearest star to our solar system and the discovery of more than 5,000 exoplanets. That is a significant accomplishment that gets us one step closer to resolving the most important query of all. Is it possible that we're not alone in the universe? Enjoy the video? Be sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.